Hi guys, my name is Becky and welcome back to our channel. Today we are tackling this corner of my top floor. It's really dark, it's very plain, and this railing is just bad. It is so loose. Welcome back to the series where I challenge myself to use thrifted materials and a love of all things retro to DIY our family home from this farmhouse to that 70s house. Thanks to Canadian Choice Windows and Doors for partnering with me on this video. I really feel like this can and should be a statement corner in our home. This is the front door and it's also the first space you walk up into when you're coming up from the bedrooms into the main living area of our home. So here's what I'm imagining. We'll fix this bad lighting by not only replacing this pendant light with something bigger and brighter, but picture this, a gigantic circle window to let in all of that beautiful daylight. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing. Are you seeing it? Are you picturing it? It's gonna be so good. We'll replace this railing with a new one, which is going to be custom, meaning it's going to be DIY'd. And we'll finish it all off with one massive gallery wall on this back wall. Okay, today I am beyond excited, but I'm also a little nervous because we are starting big. So I've been thinking about this space for a while now, and actually a few months ago, I had some professionals come out to consult on how we could make this dream circle window happen. And now, today is the day, the window's been made, and it's ready to be installed. This might be one of the most ambitious changes I've made to my house thus far, um, but I'm excited for my ideas to only go wilder from here, but I can really only do that with your support. So if you've not yet had the chance to subscribe to this channel, it literally takes seconds. It's the easiest thing you can do and it means so much to me and my team who bring you these videos to watch week after week. Okay, shameless plug over, thank you so much. Uh, let's get started. So I need to remove all the wall hooks on that wall and remove the blind above the window before the installers get here, which honestly should be like any minute now. So to bring this window to life, I am working with Canadian Choice Windows and Doors. Choosing their team means I get to work directly with both the manufacturers and the installers, which has made this whole process so easy. It also means I had full access to a wide range of custom colors and shapes as every window is made specific for each customer. So when I pitched the idea for this giant circle window, they said they could make it happen. Okay, windows are being worked on upstairs, but I figured in the meantime, I wanna figure out what lighting I'm gonna put up in the new space to replace that pendant. I have some options for my previous home, and I'm hoping one of those works, because I don't wanna buy a new one if I don't need to. But, <laughs> let's talk about this space. Okay, so you might remember this room from my home tour as like the weird in-between room, and we had talked a lot in the comments about what I could use this space for. Well, right now it's just being used as one giant storage room, and it's not pretty. We have a lot of stuff from our garage in here currently. I've been saying it's okay because a lot of this is coming out. All back here is all my frames from my old gallery wall, which I'm going to put back up in this very project. I'm justifying that this, this has an end date of looking this messy. Also, yes, there's lights down here, which I'm planning to use now too. Well, this is part of one. Okay, here's the other bit. But I know I've got other ones that I had in my last hallway in a box back here. Oh my gosh. This one, gorgeous. I remember thrifting this for like under $10. So stunning. And then also this one, which is like a small version of a Nelson bubble pendant. What is this even from? Okay, here's my collection. <laughs> I have two of these really big ones and a bunch of different pendant-y type things and I'm hoping to just figure out some sort of grouping of a couple of these that can hang nicely in the entranceway. We will come back to this when the upstairs is further along. Which, speaking of, let's go see how they're doing. So we now have a giant hole in the house, straight to the backyard. Much more efficient than the door, honestly. We should just leave it like this. <laughs> I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Oh. 
Wow! That's so nice! While I have the team here, I'm also having them add a window to the upstairs bathroom, which currently doesn't have any windows at all, and they'll also be replacing the window in our kitchen. This one is quite old and has a serious draft, which is terrible for an energy efficient home. It looks really good. Good morning. I cannot believe I'm walking up the same set of stairs. Look at the amount of light that's hitting my face already in front of this gorgeous giant new window. And it's it's a gloomy winter day today, so I cannot imagine how this is gonna feel when it's a bright, sunny summer day. I cannot wait. <laughs> Look at her. This is the most gorgeous thing in my house. That's it. It's stunning, but let me show you the other windows as well. So in the washroom upstairs, we now have the brand new window where there was never even a window at all in this space. And what a difference already. Just having this daylight pour in and being able to open the window and get fresh air in the bathroom. It feels like an entirely new space. It is winter out, but I'm gonna open this anyways, just to show you how easy it is. It just pops open like that. Bam, fresh air in the bathroom. Is it weird to say that I like spending time in this bathroom now? <laughs> Cause I really do. Okay, but come check out the kitchen too. And then to my right here is the replacement window for the kitchen. It's the exact same size as the old one, but it is a single sheet of glass, so there is nothing interrupted between you and the view out into the field, which is exactly what I wanted. The old one had a seam down the middle of the window that slid. It was terrible for insulation. And these windows have revolutionary draft lock technology with triple pane glass, meaning they're designed to perform best in Canadian climates. So no more cold drafts entering our house. It's so gorgeous. I think it's the largest size that we could do uh, in a single sheet of glass or else it would be too heavy. But I'm so glad we were able to make it work and Wow, what a difference. I am so impressed with how this entire process went with Canadian Choice windows and doors. You guys know that I'm going for this mid-century style in this home, and I was a little worried that I'd only have very modern options to choose from. But I showed them the trim on these windows that I had already done in a previous makeover, and let me tell you, the new windows are a perfect match. So while of course these windows feel brand new and amazing, they also feel so right at home in this house, which was very important to me. So when the windows were finished, the trims were just left in untreated raw wood and it was up to me to kind of do whatever I wanted, stain paint. I wanted to stain them in the same color wood that I did in the front office games room. I've already gone ahead and actually done it to the, the window here and the one in the bathroom, but I haven't done the door or the big window over there. So let's go talk about it. Okay, so this wall behind me when they put in the circle window had to entirely be redone because originally it was this wood paneling texture that's on a lot of the, the walls in the house. Like, I don't know if you can see here. It's got these lines. It was originally like a wood patterned paneling. You know the one in your grandma's basement. The previous owners painted it like a gray. Basically that stuff's not patchable. You'll never get the same striped pattern to line up. So instead of even dealing with that, they took it all down and they drywalled this back wall, which I'm, perfectly happy with because drywall is much better than that paneling. <laughs> so this is white, but above it, that's more the paneling too in that gray color. I need to paint that. And in the journey of all that fixing up this wall, that also meant they had to retrim the door just because the depths weren't the same. So I've got some new wood trim on this door as well. Perfectly fine. Um, that's also why I need to stain that. So I've got the same, let me actually grab it. This product here, it's a two-in-one stain and clear coat product. And honestly, it's so easy because it's one coat and you're basically done. So I need to put this on the trim. We'll just start with that. This drywall here is new and fresh. So I'm gonna use the delicate painter's tape because new drywall has a tendency to kind of rip if you use regular painter's tape. I thought it was like $14 a roll. This is truly liquid gold. 
not liquid gold, tape form gold. Gold in tape form, so I hope this works well. I find this stuff is almost like a fake tanner in the sense that it develops over the course of a few minutes, so it's going to get darker than when you first put it on. And also, it means you have to be really deliberate where you place it because it soaks in and will stain if you're not careful and it's really hard to kind of even that out later. So I went in, even though it's a stain, I painted it on in a very deliberate angle up there because if I just kind of put it wherever, it's gonna soak in so blotchy and get darker and darker and it's like impossible to fix that. So while I say I love this product because it's so easy and it's so quick, it requires a little bit more care than just regular old stain that you rub on. Um, okay, the staining of this trim made all the difference. I mean, it was gorgeous before, but it looks so good in the darker wood. It's so good. Okay, so now we need to address <laughs> all the other parts that haven't been painted, like this entire wall and the top bit of this wall. But the problem is, to get to this wall, I have a big staircase in the way. Let's talk about it. So um, this is quite a large wall, if you can't tell, and it's not that easy to get to. <laughs> How do I even do this? Oh my gosh. Seeing as we want to replace this railing anyways, I actually think it makes a lot of sense to take the railing down right now so I can lay a board across this whole area and put my ladder here to reach this wall to paint it. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm kind of stuck here. What did I do? <laughs> okay, oh my god, okay. And can we just take a second to talk about why this railing needs to come down for way more reasons than aesthetics? This is the most unsafe railing I've ever seen. <laughs> it is so loose. You can't tell me that's right. Austin, what do you think about this railing? Can I give it a little shake? It's an earthquake. Good thing we don't live in California. <laughs> Oh, you broke it! <laughs> Would you trust this? I wouldn't trust this to save a child, let alone an adult. And I don't understand why. There's no glue? N well... No nails? <laughs> yeah. But why they wouldn't have put this railing to the wall? Yeah, and then you get way more support. We're gonna do a better job, I'll tell you that. I don't like how this was built, I don't trust it, it's unsafe. I didn't think it would break that easy. Oh, Whoops! Are you kidding? Look, there's tape on there. No! No! They used tape. No! <laughs> Yo, zoom in on that. Can what? we zoom in on that? <laughs> this has to be a joke. I don't know how railings are supposed to go together, but something tells me... Better than this? You need at least a screw or a nail or glue somewhere. What, not tuck tape? Diddy. The only thing holding this rung in was tuck tape. A, a ball of tuck tape. Literal tape. I can't be right. I cannot be right. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so for all those reasons, this is coming down and we're gonna do a much better job putting a new railing back up. <laughs> got an exciting package from Dickies in the mail. Yes, best work wear in the game. Okay, feeling so ready to paint. But there's one thing I actually wanna do before we get into that, and that is the fact that I've been planning and thinking ahead about this new railing that's gonna have to go back there. And it's gonna require some metal piping. 
square pipes, I believe. We'll talk more about that later, but that's something I have to custom order, I think. So I've been doing some lots of fun math and estimating how much I'm gonna need. So I'm gonna get that, that ordered because I don't know how long that's gonna take. Hopefully not too long. Hopefully it's not too expensive either. Hello. I was looking to place an order for some square steel tubing. Thank you so much. Okay, bye. Okay, it's looking like I can get it um, relatively easily, which is great news, but we will we'll touch base on that later. For now, let's get to painting. Let us get to painting, okay. <laughs> the color that I use for white in my house is Benjamin Moore. It is Swiss Coffee OC45. It's a great warm white. And you've got to shake your paint if you haven't used it in a while. trying really hard not to think about the giant hole that's technically below me, even though it is covered with a sheet of plywood, and I am safe on either side of this with the ladder. It's still freaking me out a little bit knowing that it's quite a far distance below me. But we don't think about that. We don't look down. Eye on the paint. Hey guys, good morning. Look at this cup. It has mushrooms with little smiley faces on it. Adorable. Um, okay, we're hanging some lights today. These are the selects that I'm going with. So I've got three separate hardwired, just basic pendant light cords running through all of these and I need to join them together in the ceiling up there and then somehow Hang them. I think I'll swag them all in different directions perhaps so it makes kind of like a big chandelier vibe. It sounds easy. I don't think it's gonna be that easy. So each one of these is just like a basic lampshade and then in the middle I have like a simple pendant light cord running through them all. You can get these at Ikea or honestly most hardware stores and it's got regular lamp wire running through it all. And that's because I'm hardwiring this into the ceiling. You could get the plug-in option and just do it to three different plugs if you wanted to go that route. But the other thing that I'm using for this project is this. This is called a canopy and it's what the cords go into if you're doing the hardwired method. And this one supports three different cords which is perfect because that's how many I have. And you put the cords through these tighten the little set screws and it holds them all nicely from the ceiling. I am just gonna start with the first one because this one is the one I think I wanna just hang straight down so it's simple. The other two require some figuring out of placement, which I don't know yet, so we'll just do this one. Um, I'm not wiring this together yet because I just wanna get the placement right. Why is it the time that you need to rely on your hands the most is when I get sweaty? Like, holy crap. <laughs> Sorry, that's kinda gross, but like, I'm holding a glass light above a tile floor. I need my fingers to cooperate right now. Oh my god, I'm so nervous. Ah! I, like, I know it's fine. I know it's fine. I'm just so nervous to let go of it. Okay, next up is this Nelson style fabric pendant light. I think it wants to hang above this one and over here more. Holy crap, that's not good if you're afraid of heights. <laughs> I don't think I am, but my nerves are telling me otherwise. It would be really great if I could be here and also there telling me if this looks good. <laughs> and the last one can hang in the middle here, perhaps. Okay. Okay. I'm stuck. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, I'm feeling really good about the placement of all of these. I think I just might move the lower one up a tiny bit, but once I'm for sure, for sure happy, I'm gonna take these little zip ties and zip tie the cord of the light to the hook in the ceiling so it doesn't move. It's there forever, it doesn't fall on anyone. <laughs> and then we'll get this wired up, see how it looks turned on. Okay, ready? Mm -hmm. It's not that one. Wow! Oh, that's almost too bright. I did buy the extremely bright bulbs. I thought it'd be nice. Is that too bright? It's, it's pretty bright. But it looks nice! Okay. <laughs> I think it's looking really good. I'm impressed with how that whole thing came together, considering it was an eclectic mix of different shades that I've got over many different years of my life. I think it works. I know this one's a little darker and it's a little more off-white, but it's not bothering me the way that I think that it might in another lifetime. <laughs> I think it's looking so good, but I think that's where I'm gonna leave it here or else this would be like a two hour video. But hey, if that's something you'd be interested in down the road, let me know in the comments below. We're always thinking formats and different ways to try new things. But for the meantime, I'm gonna come back with a part two and finish this whole space up very soon. So if you don't wanna miss that, make sure you're subscribed to this channel, hit that bell, you'll be notified immediately as soon as the next half drops. And like I said, it's coming soon, very soon. So yeah, we got a lot done today. Gorgeous brand new windows, I cannot, say enough amazing things about working with Canadian Choice Windows and Doors to get this done. It is gorgeous. And I know we're still missing a railing and this wall's still looking blank, but we will get there and I'll see you next time. Thanks guys, bye. So a little bit of backstory. My house currently does have a pipe hookup in the wall of the living room for a wood stove. In an attempt to cut down our uses of other conventional house heating methods, we do wanna add a wood stove back into this part of the house.